Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and we just recently toured CyberPower's offices in California where the company had a few Z170 motherboards on display. So these are Skylake motherboards with the new Z170 chipset and that will effectively be replacing the Z97 line and everything that came before that. It is not an X99 replacement. The Z170 chipset can tactically support DDR3 and DDR4 but all the boards we looked at while there were DDR4 really not surprisingly and all we're doing here is showing off a few of those motherboards there are three that we saw in person and I should quickly note that none of these were necessarily finalized models so they may change before publication or production rather in the August time frame for Skylake S but the ASRock boards were fairly feature complete and we saw the gaming K6 and gaming K4 from ASRock and then the Gigabyte GA Z170 HD3, which is a lower end entry level board. So the gaming K6 is something that we don't have a price for yet, and that's true for all three of these boards. I would imagine this will be in the probably middle 100s, upper 100s range, because it is a, a pretty feature complete board. It has 12 or 14 phases on the VRM, not 100% clear on that, but quite a few phases, more than enough for Skylake overclocking. It's got three PCI Express x1 slots by one and then it has three pcie 3.0 slots one hardwired for by 16 and the other two are by 8 and by 4 or x8 and x4 however you want to say that sli and crossfire are both listed as supported on the k6 and it's also got an ultra m.2 slot at 32 gigabits per second consuming four pcie 3.x lanes and that rests below the first primary pci express slot the K6 board is definitely a mid-range to upper mid-range board for Skylake. It's got a couple of SATA Express ports on it, and then the usual SATA 3 options as well. For troubleshooting and diagnostics, the board has two BIOS chips, which are toggleable. So if you brick one chip when updating, you can toggle to the other one, and it'll still be usable. And then there's a seven-segment display that lives near the bottom of the board, and that's really just used for troubleshooting error codes things like that and then you've got the somewhat standard now overclocking and power buttons up near the dim slots so that is the gaming k6 from asrock it is a fatality board asrock's fatality gaming k4 is a lower tier board i would imagine this will probably be closer to the hundred dollar price point but again we don't have prices yet that's just speculation based on feature set and it looks like the k4 has the same black and red aesthetic as the K6. It's got the same IO cover on it with the ASRock Gaming logo. And then it has the Purity Sound 3 cover as well, which the K6 also had. The K4 has a slimmer VRM, voltage regulator module. It looks like it's about 10 phases for the CPU. And it's got a single PCIe slot wired for by 16 with one more for by four usage. So not really great or even usable for multi-video card support. And then it's got three PCIe by one slots if you wanna do audio cards or capture cards, things like that. There is a four pin Molex header sitting above the PCIe by one one slot for additional power. I'm currently unclear on whether that is for GPU or CPU overclocking, but it is probably and almost definitely for one of those based on the history of four pin Molex connectors on motherboards. And then it's also got an M2 slot just like the K6 does, but it is unlabeled and unbranded on the board, which means that we're really unclear right now on whether this will remain in the final production model or if it's just something that was on there for the prototype dummy. But it is there in the board that we saw, so it's possible that it'll make it to the final production model of the K4. And then the usual SATA Express, SATA 3, ports and two more SATA 3 ports near the chipset heatsink and the DIMMs. So it's got a couple of those but not as fully loaded. It still has two BIOS chips, BIOS A1 and B1, which are nice to have in the event of a BIOS failure. The final motherboard is Gigabyte's GA-Z170 HD3. This board is the most prototype looking board that we saw, so it is very likely that this is incomplete and not representative of the final model as evidenced in part by some of the striped marks on the PCB, but we can learn the basics from it. And this HD3 has just two PCIe 3.0 slots. One is wired for by 16, one is wired for what looks like by four, and then it's got two PCIe 
buy one slots and two PCI slots, not express, for whatever reason. I can't really think of a reason you would use those anymore, but they are on there. There's also some uh, serial and, and ports like that as well, so it's definitely got some support for what would be the Asia or business markets where they still su use some of those legacy technologies. There is an M.2 Ultra 32 gigabits per second port between the PCIe and the CPU slot, and then it's got a black and gold VRM heatsink north of the CPU. It is currently unclear if there will be more heat sinks or shields on the board. It could be dressed up a little bit before launch. We're really not sure yet. We'll find out when the product comes out and is uh, officially showcased in less than a month here. The VRM looks to be about six phases on this board as is. And that's it for this quick motherboard roundup. We saw these at the CyberPower offices and we're expecting Skylake very shortly. We actually have test samples in hand and as soon as embargo is lifted, we'll have a review on Intel Skylake and all of the supporting technologies, DDR4, motherboards, things like that. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on this content and then check out our Patreon page if you're a fan of our in the field work and journalism on hardware. It definitely helps us out to look into our Patreon page and I will see you all next time.